thing. There we go. Uh, hey guys, how's it going? Brad coming to you live from my apartment. Although, not necessarily live. I used to say that a lot in my videos, and turns out that live in my mind, right now, where we're standing, yes, is live. But you're watching it now. This is the past. You're in the future to me. So, like literally, what you see on the screen, where you are, is the future to where I am right now. Weird perception, man. Um, I'm running low on e-juice. Uh-oh, I got plenty of it over here. I'm sur uh, swizzling down some pink penguin from uh, Dave's e-cig shop here in New York. Yummy. That's delicious. Let me take one more swig. That's really yummy. So, here's what's going on. Uh, it's been quite some time since I got my X100T camera in. And I have to say, I just want to do an update review on this thing. This camera is phenomenal. Um, insanely impressed with this baby. Uh, let me just take everything off here. This is just the plain front. Uh, the ring that normally goes on the front of the lens here to hide the threads is in my camera bag, but this camera is phenomenal. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled by it. The viewfinder. Let's go just step by step through the camera. What I love about the viewfinder of the camera um, as I'm actually looking right now uh, at the screen in front of me, I love how bright it is. If I switch it to the optical viewfinder, it's still incredibly bright, like a Leica might be. Like a Leica. Cool. Um, the frame lines and the overlay that's in the uh, viewfinder is incredibly, uh, it, it's, an, it's absolutely incredible. I can see how many images I have left, what my uh, image type is, clarity, all that stuff, uh, ISO, everything. The screen in the back is also really phenomenal. Um, I know that really gave you a whole bunch of something, right, to look at. So here, let's just see if maybe I can show you through there. I don't know if that'll work or not. No, that's not working. Um, the camera, just usability and performance-wise is phenomenal. The size. Let me take the leather, um, this leather case I have on it off. Its size fits in the hand perfectly. Um, ergonomically, this thing is just phenomenal uh, for me. And I've got pretty big hands. Um, it just it feels nice. The buttons and the layout on the back of the camera are phenomenal as well. Everything's right at touch. And there's a ton of programmable features that you have on this camera. Um, you can adjust and set your own settings for, I think, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 function buttons on the back that you can have select to do anything from, um, if you want to go to black and white, Velvia, uh, the new... Fuji Chrome or the Chrome version of their film simulator on here. Whatever you need, it's right there. Quick menu on the back. Okay, I don't think you can really quite see that, but the quick menu is completely customizable. Um, really a phenomenal camera. And then also, and Jared Poland may disagree with me on this, probably doesn't even watch my channel ever. Um, and I wouldn't expect him to because this is a pipe and cigar mostly channel. Um, I'm just screwing on my lens hood and um, and the filter attachment device. Um, but I find that this camera shoots in automatic phenomenally. If I really don't need to be, you know, all over my settings and I'm really not caring so much about what's coming out, it's more just for personal enjoyment. Um, yeah, I'm shooting on automatic. Most of the time, though, with the selector knob, very much like a Leica lens or any other rangefinder lens, 
I've got my f-stop adjustments here in sort of a click format, and it's, uh, it goes up in increments of thirds. So I've got 2, 2, 8, 4, 5, 6, 8, 11, and 16, but I also have third incremental stops in between that as well. Uh, in between those hard numbers, um, I'm usually just adjusting my aperture, setting the shutter speed to automatic, and then being in sort of an automatic ISO shutter speed combination where I've set it up to certain ISOs I have set with specific shutter speeds, specifically because I want to capture um, fast-moving subjects or dark light. I have a bunch of preset stuff that I put in here that um, help me to shoot the way that I would normally shoot without having to fiddle around. Uh, on the front of the camera, like I said, I have my lens hood and I've got this is the one from Fuji. I spent a ton of money on it. You can find them for cheaper online. Um, but I also have the adapter ring in the front because I like to use polarized, circular polarizing filters, warming filters, other things like that. So um, I needed to have a threaded adapter. And here's why. On the lens, and this is something you need to think about when you're getting into this camera. On the front of this lens, you'll see that you have a focus ring here. It's sort of a knurled ring. Uh, on the inside up at the top here, let's see if I can orient this correctly. On the top here, you'll see that there's like these little dots. They're actually numbers. I don't know if you can see that. But that's your click stop to do um, your f-stops. You then have a focus ring here, a knurled focus ring. And then on the outside here, right where you see that little highlight right above my finger. Sorry about the little scar on my finger there. Right there. Those are threads on the outside, not the inside of the, it's not on the inside where the black is, it's actually on the outside where the knurled ring is. Um, you can't really screw anything onto that because it doesn't mate with polarizing filters or any other kind of standard filter. So you have to have a filter, just a, like a filter adapter ring, if you will. Um, you could probably take the glass out of a um, if I can get this back on. Yeah, look at me break break my own thing already. Um, I'm sure that you could probably take the glass out of a filter or some kind of a filter assembly and and make one yourself. Who knows? I certainly don't. Um, but. I just bought the thing from Fujifilm. It works phenomenally. I can keep my circularized pull, uh, my circular polarizing filter on the front. Um, and then the lens hood fits on. Oh, look at that. I put it on backwards. Hold on. <laughs> then I can just put my lens hood on the front. I can also use it without a filter and just the lens hood. But if you want to add, attach any accessories to the front of the lens, that's how you have to do it. They also produce in uh, for this camera a wide telephoto attachment. I think it brings it to like a 50 or an 85 millimeter uh, focal length. And then you also have a wide angle which brings you from this 23 millimeter 35 equiv down to like a 25 equiv, 15. It's just a wider angle. Probably a little bit more fish eye like uh, to accomplish this effect. I don't have that. I like to shoot what the camera comes with uh, out of the box. The only addition that I have is the Fujifilm leather uh, protective case that I sometimes shoot with, sometimes I don't. It adds a, just a, you know, it adds a nice bulk to the camera, uh, something a little bit more like a feeling, uh, a little bit fatter of a body. It produces something a little bit richer to hold for the hand. Um, People have been saying that they have problems with the camera uh, functioning with this in terms of changing the battery and getting into the back port. I have had no problems with this, uh, but some people say that with this flap at the bottom uh, where the battery compartment is that they can't get their compartment door open. Well, watch this. Simple enough. Just push the leather a little bit. Like It's not that big of a deal. Get over it. Uh, but other than that, this camera has worked absolutely phenomenally for me. Startup time, if it's on and the camera goes to sort of like a sleeper mode, um, 
I tend to notice that the camera will take a while and has lag before it starts back up. <sighs> okay, so yeah, it's a problem if you want to shoot quickly on the street and all of a sudden you get in a situation. But if I have the strap around my wrist, you know, if I've got this sort of like in, um, if I've got, if I just wrap my strap up the way I normally do when I'm on the street, because I usually don't have it around my neck, and it's just sitting like at my side, I'll just depress a little bit to wake it back up so it focuses in, wakes itself up so it's always ready to rock. Battery life, okay. Uh, not the greatest. Uh, I get about 400 shots on a battery, uh, but then again, I tend to be very conservative with how much I shoot. Um, I'm not constantly taking pictures. I grew up with film, so 36, 24 or 36 exposures to a roll unless you're doing some weird 220 where you might only have 12. Uh, but I don't even know if they make rolls of 220 and 12. I might be making that up because my brain does that. Um, but I shot with film, so I might go out a whole day and only shoot 30 images. Um, if I'm lucky, let's see, how many do I have on here? Looks like I've got maybe a hundred images, and that's a month of shooting. So, you know, um, yeah, take it for what you will. The only thing, though, about this leather case is I cannot access access the ports on the side of the camera, uh, like the USB port. It's the only thing I don't like about it. But overall impression, this camera is phenomenal. I'm getting a hot shoe mount for my GoPro, so maybe when I go out shooting, I can video while I shoot. We'll see if it works. I know Eric Kim has done that, so if Eric Kim sees this, let me know how you accomplish it. I know I'm getting a hot shoe mount that with the case and the thing. Tell me what you think about it. Um, and if you've done that before with a rangefinder camera, tell me how it went for you. Uh, but uh, definitely, if you're thinking about the X100T, I recommend it. And that may not sound like much, but I sell equipment like you wouldn't believe. I had a D3S, then I had a D4, and now I've got a D... I had a D3S, I sold that for film, and then I sold the film equipment for more film equipment, then I sold the film equipment for other digital equipment, had a couple bodies, blah, 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 blah. Now I'm on this. I will never get rid of this camera until the next X100, you know... Point five comes out, whatever it is. X100 V2. Um, but yeah, great little camera. See you later.